Welcome to another edition of Observing Consciousness. Consciousness. Today is just Alethea and I. Dana is on vacation and we're jealous. Yeah, she gone. She gone. So uh, the table's a little naked because Dana is responsible typically for bringing over a lot of the uh, a lot of the, the crystals and stuff. But Alethea didn't bring her singing bowl today. No. So we're feeling very naked. So Feeling naked without my whoopee. Yeah, we just have a few <laughs> things on the table. So today we wanted to... Uh, we wanted to talk a little bit about manifesting and how manifesting has been in our lives, how it's affected us, how we go about doing it. Um, you know, hopefully, just so other people, if they're getting into the idea, they can use some of some of our strategies or some of the things that we do, and uh, we can share a little bit. Yeah, I feel like manifesting is a big topic now. People are becoming more like into it. It's getting like collective consciousness. You know, everybody's. It's coming up all over my feeds everywhere, and it's something I've learned. I've been like hearing about and knowing about for a while, but I've had different stages of integrating it in my life. Um, but I think it's something people want to learn more about. Yeah, I I didn't so I didn't realize I didn't understand anything about manifesting. I've heard I've heard about manifesting for years, never spent any time like looking into it, understanding what it was about. Mm -hmm. And I thought if I didn't if if I wasn't trying to manifest anything, then I would just let life happen and whatever it was, it was. And as I got further into this journey in the last few years and got more into psychedelics, yeah. I realized, oh shit, I am actually like, even on autopilot, I still manifest. And it's because, you know, the way that the way that the universe works, where you spend roughly 75 to 80% of your thoughts, that's what you're manifesting. Mm -hmm. So if you're in these stuck in these spots where um, you're miserable and you're angry and you just all day long, you're, you're angry about whatever it is. You're tipping. You're, you're basically charging and manifesting that same thing to happen over and over and over again. It may not be with the same person, but that same result will happen. That same problem will keep coming up because mm -hmm. you keep dwelling on it, and it's because that's where you, where you're spending your thoughts. And it it got me thinking, like, why is that? Where does that come mm -hmm. from? And so I kind of deep dived on it a little bit, and what I came up with was, you know, quantum physics plays a field, and when you take and Adam, I'm gonna we'll talk about I'm gonna talk about the double slit test a little bit, and if I don't do a very good job of explaining this, you can look up doc, Dr. Quantum on YouTube. Dr. Quantum. Dr. Quantum, and uh, it, it'll show the double slit test. So Dr. Quantum's double slit test. So <clears throat> inside of an atom is a proton, a neutron, and an electron. And when they do what they what's called the double slit test, they take a photon and they or the proton rather, and they shoot it like through a, through a gun and the, the proton is, it acts like a BB mm -hmm. when it's being observed. So they put a camera on it and they put it through a single slit and they fire it through. And when it hits the back of the wall, it makes a single line as you'd expect. When they put two slits in there and do the same exact thing, shoot BBs through it, and it's observed as they measure it, it makes two, two lines across the back wall everywhere where it hit like the, mm -hmm. the sides didn't go through, but where it hit the slits, it went through and made a line on the back wall. So then they decided to not observe it to take the camera off of it and just do the same test, shoot these through there. Instead of acting as a particle or as a little piece of matter like a BB that went through the slit, it acted as a wavelength. Hmm. So when they put the two slits down, what they got, so the first slit, when they had one slit, it went through, and when if, if a wave, like imagine water, and it makes a ripple, mm -hmm. when it hits the slit, it would the ripple would stop and then go through the slit and make a new ripple. Hmm. When you have two slits though, you have two waves of water. It would hit the, the two slits, it would stop, and then make the, the two new vibrations. And what those would do is they, now you have two waves going through and they would run into each other. Each spot where they run into each other, it's what they call an interference uh, signal. So what it says is that the protons have the ability to act in two ways, depending on if they're being observed or not. So <clears throat> the hypothesis is that our consciousness brings all of this to life. The inside of an atom or atoms, there's just light waves. They're, they're, they're waves or vibration, which is really sound, mm -hmm. that, that um, are out in the universe, they're waving around, and our consciousness brings it to life. So the old adage, if a tree falls in the forest, there's nobody there to hear it, right. doesn't make a sound. And I think the answer to that is, if there's nobody there to observe it, there is no forest. It's just light waves mm -hmm. with the potential to be a forest when it's observed by consciousness. And then... I believe that it snaps into place at light speed, which is why we will never travel faster than light speed. It snaps into place at light speed and then everything looks as it is. It looks objectively real. Mm -hmm. If our consciousness brings this to life, what makes us think that our thoughts 
don't bring everything inside of the objective reality to life. Right. So manifesting is like it, it's you're doing it whether you like it or not, whether you realize it or not, which is why I was saying earlier that I went on autopilot for the longest time and didn't realize that I was still in this manifestation process and didn't know I didn't know it was happening to begin with. And then when you saw it, it's like, wait a second, my thoughts mm -hmm. can break me out of this. I can just change my thoughts and I can break out of it. Mm -hmm. And sure enough, over the last four years, I started changing my thoughts and I've like broken out of it. So have you seen stuff like that for yourself? Absolutely. It's, I mean, one, it's important to become aware of it. That's like step one. People, you know, they get into people, we're all guilty of it. We get into cycles of like feeling bad and everything and it perpetuates. And then some people just live in that forever. You know, it's where they're comfortable, but it's like self-generating and it's just, kind of being stuck in a way. Well, that's like, like, that's waking up, right? I mean, yeah. that, that's waking up is when, because you're self-generating and you're mm -hmm. on autopilot, you're just creating yeah. more of this reality without even understanding that your thoughts are the creation right. of this reality. So it's, that's waking up, becoming awakened. Like that's part of that awakening is realizing right. that, right? Yeah, and like you, you, you can wake up and you can realize, oh wow, like I really was like creating this situation for myself and it was going on for so long like this. But then, you know, the next step of that is like, how do I, break out of that like what do I do to like change that you know because there's it goes to deep-seated things of like maybe you have feelings of unworthiness like I'm not worthy to have a lot of money I'm not worthy to have a good partner I'm not worthy of this kind of amazing happiness every day like that's not gonna happen for me so I think that in the realization of it there's also some deep healing that has to happen in order to get to a place of being able to like generate good things in your life um, so it's, it's a lot, <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot and it's not a lot at all. You know, it's all, <laughs> well, I, I started looking back when I, when I first realized I was like, Oh my God, I'm like, my thoughts are, I'm, I'm creating my own reality with just mm -hmm. the 70, like 75% of my thoughts, you know, 25% of my thoughts are all over the place. It's like, you know, right. if I'm thinking about like, what would it be like to be on a pogo stick yeah. 40 feet in the air? Like, that's probably not, probably not going to manifest like that particular one. like a tree falls one. in the forest. There, wait, there is no forest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I literally was looking back at when I was about 20, I think I was like 21, 22. I was making like $6 an hour. I was barely getting by. Mm -hmm. Like my rent took up, you know, literally like three quarters of the paychecks mm -hmm. that came in. So there's just barely anything left. So I was scraping to get by. And I was able to save like over the course of, you know, eight or nine months, I, I was able to save like five or $600. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, I was like, oh, I finally, I felt like I had a little safety net. And I was mm -hmm. like, okay, so if something were to break down on my truck now, like I would be able to fix, and like, I'd be able to fix it. And then like two or three weeks later, something like my clutch went on my truck. <laughs> and, like, and then I'm, then I have to like, and I was super yeah. stressed about it, but I was like, well, at least I have the money to fix it. But then yeah. I didn't have the money to take it to a mechanic. So I had to fix it myself. Right. Like, <laughs> Man, this, this, this particular reality, I didn't realize but I, but I did in an interesting way at that point when I, when I saw how quickly my truck broke down after I was like, okay, I gave it the okay to mm -hmm. break down and it did. And I, I realized that my thoughts had something to do with these mm -hmm. and I started correcting some of that stuff, but I didn't realize that it had everything, everything to do with that. I thought it was, it was like, more like, oh, I'm jinxing myself or I gotta like, not, not say that. Yeah, yeah, I didn't feel like manifesting. Yeah. I felt like jinxing myself. Yeah, yeah. And, and you don't, you know, you don't want to jinx it. So yeah. I, I would, I would stop myself from saying things like, you know, the truck breaking down. And I caught myself in a couple other situations mm -hmm. where I was like, I would be okay if this happened. Then it happened. I was like, I didn't really want this to happen. It wouldn't really be yeah. okay. So I, I realized earlier on that my thoughts did have something to do with it, but I didn't realize it was manifesting. Mm -hmm. It was the jinx thing. It was the oh, that's, yeah. You know, don't say this because it'll come back and get your karma, if you will. Yeah. Things like that. Um, then I, I started like after I did ayahuasca and I'd been, I, I don't know how many times it was. It was probably somewhere in the neighborhood of my, in my first, you know, six to eight times, something like that, six or nine times. I had a, uh, I, I started like wanting, wanting more, more for myself, mm -hmm. wanting something different for myself. I wasn't happy in the situation I was in at that point I was doing manufacturing. And I, so this must've been after, like right after I met my soul, the sixth journey that I went on. Um, that's when I started going, I want something different. I started thinking about the things that I wanted. I started thinking about the difference that I wanted, but I didn't get super detailed. I didn't get really granular mm -hmm. about it. I had this, this bigger idea that I just wanted something where I could give back, where I could help, mm -hmm. where I could be, I could be in more of my element and not be in this, this rut of, of societal career path. Got to do this, got to achieve this, got to be here by this age. And I, manifested my way out of it fairly quickly too. Mm -hmm. I just, I just, I really wanted it and I felt it. I like, I could feel the emotion in it. I actually meditated on it and mm -hmm. I think about it. And within, I'm not even kidding you, it was uh, that, that particular, when I did the sixth journey was in like July 
and by September 15th, I had moved to a new state. I'd quit my job. Boom. <laughs> Everything changed. Every, my whole life changed. So it was like, there's power behind this. And, and I wanted to talk a little bit about how you get to that point. Like how, what is, you know, because manifesting is, it's where you spend your time thinking about mm -hmm. things. You know, you're thinking about, you're, a lot of times you're thinking about, you're stressed about the things that happened in the past or something that's going to happen. And you manifest more of whatever's mm -hmm. bothering you. So when we talk about manifesting, like you spend where you're supposed to, the way that the, the manifesting people, I don't even know. <laughs> the, the gods of manifesting. The, the gods of, I've read Joe Dispenza's book, Becoming Supernatural, yes. and that book goes deep onto it. And yeah. it's, it's really, I mean, at the, the core of it is, it's, it's, it is manifesting. It's learning how to manifest your mm -hmm. realities. Um, and there's, there's like a, there's a method to it. You know, you, you don't just, I want this. You know, there's there's chakras that are involved. There's there's a vibration that's involved. There's feeling. There's, there's feeling. feeling that's involved. You know, it's not just oh, I I want that and like I I will have that. I will have that. That's important, but um, it's more about vibration. Is like what you're putting out there is actually like embodying a feeling and embodying that vibration of what gets attracted to you. It, well, emotion mm -hmm. is energy yep. in in pro in pro mm -hmm. energy and movement. So it's, it's it, when you put, it, the more emotion you put behind something, the more the energy moves, mm -hmm. the more vibration the energy mm -hmm. has. And that's like, so feeling, when you feel with your heart, you feel what the, and when you manifest, you go, okay, I want, you know, a broader reality. I want to have success or I want an opportunity. You know, you're not saying I want this particular job at this particular company. It's, it doesn't quite work like that. The manifesting, it, it'll go get the buy, it'll reach out to what you need. So you're looking for an opportunity. You, let's say that you're looking for, for a particular opportunity. I want a, I want a job where I can A, B, C, X, Y, Z. Name off the things you want out of the job, not the job you want, and let the thing come to you. And it's and when you, if you had that job, if you had this thing that allowed you to have time freedom and you still made great money and you had, mm -hmm. you know, you, you could uh, integrate whatever, you know, your sales thing, whatever, whatever life has the, you know, your life has to, to add to it, whatever you want in there, you put all that stuff in there. And then you're, uh, you put the emotion that you'd actually feel if it had already happened. And you talk about it as if it has already happened. Which is and, fun because you get to, you get to jump into that role of like, this is me and how I feel when I have $10 million in the bank and nothing to worry about. Like, I don't have to, you know, go to work at these hours. I can choose what I want to do. And that, then the start, the feeling of excitement starts to generate. And that's, that's when you're really like living in that vibration. And the more we can spend time in that, even if it's just like setting aside minutes in a day where we can like get into that feeling and like be really free with it, that's that's changing the vibration. That's putting the vibration out there. And picturing yourself in it. Like mm -hmm. when you you know, when you meditate, you you don't always have to meditate to just clear your mind. You can meditate for purpose. You mm -hmm. can meditate to you can meditate and, and some of the I got into uh, you know, in Joe's book, he talks about the different states of the mind and <clears throat> One of the one of the best states of mind to be in is in the theta state mm -hmm. to reach out to these by because your your subconscious it's it's everything your brain is slowed down where everything is is the rest of the brain is not really working that hard so it's your your subconscious is able to reach out in your subconscious I I don't quite understand the role of the subconscious but it plays a an integral role in mm -hmm. your manifestations and making and going out and actually creating these things and if you think about it you know our subconscious it's kind of formed between the ages of zero to seven where we operate in theta state and mm -hmm. that forms kind of the subconscious of what's going to be mm -hmm. our consciousness that's going to that's going to tell us how to, how to maneuver and process information as it's come in we learn all that stuff when we're young and and the somehow the way that information comes in and comes back out through the subconscious so being in that theta state is a very helpful place to manifest is being being there and then i am this and i feel this and i love this and you know it's there's there's a lot to to the manifesting and the different <clears throat> chakras through the different the the, the different systems mm -hmm. systems like the the lowest vibration is the root chakra mm -hmm. and root chakra is i am <clears throat> so when you say i am you're you're manifesting from that lowest vibration if you manifest just from there it'll tend to take a long time because well which is kind of the old way of manifesting like it's it's affirmations i am the that's that's the affirmation and now these days you know there's more attached to it than that so out of all the old ways of doing affirmations it was i am this and, and things were taking longer so i think it's really cool to think of it going through the chakras because it it is a quicker route so you know a little bit more about the chakras than I do. You want to can you walk us through a little bit through this, through some of those? Yeah. So like you said, the root chakra is I am, and then um, next is this, uh, the sacral chakra, which is I I feel, and that's like well we, we you, you would feel so you'd feel worthy of, of an opportunity. You mm -hmm. would feel worthy of of having abundance. You would feel 
Feel, is that, yeah. That's how you'd say it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I feel, yeah, I feel abundant. I feel happy that I always have more than I need. Okay. And I then, feel grateful. You know, you, you, yeah, go through solar plexus. Solar, so, yeah, <laughs> so I was going to say we'll just work our way up. Right? So the solar plexus is, what, what is the solar plexus? Uh, solar plexus is willpower, and the, the saying is I do. I do. So, so I, how would you, how would you put that? I do. Yeah. It's, it's be, uh, taking action. So. I do, I do what's necessary. Yeah. I do what's, I do what's necessary, necessary, to, necessary to reach my to goals. Reach to, my goals. Yeah. Okay. And then, so next up would be the heart, heart. and the heart is, um, I love, I love, so I, <laughs> I, I love, I love, I love opportunities. Is that, how would you say that? I love, yeah. so you, um, I love having a life of freedom where I don't, you know, I, I just go into the feeling about um, loving where you're at. Like I love, I like. love feeling safe in my environment. I love not having to worry about money. Things okay. like that. And then we got the, so the next one up would be throat chakra. Uh, yeah. I speak. So you speak it into existence. Uh, yep. You speak and that's, uh -huh. that's as if it's already happening. Yeah. It's already happened or it's, it's I'm a millionaire. Yeah. I'm a, this is <laughs> and, it, and it feels great to be a millionaire. Yeah. And, it okay. feels amazing to have millions of dollars. And then through, so the, the next chakra is, it's not really the eyes, it's kind of like the forehead, but it's the, but you, you do that one as I see, that's the, I, I can see. Yeah, because it's the real seeing, it's the it's, intuition. It's the third eye, yeah. it's your third eye, third I eye see. chakra. Mm -hmm. so, okay, and then the crown chakra is. I know. I know. I know that this is what my path is. I know yeah. this is, this is who I am. Yeah. Okay, so it's that's kind of. assured. So it's, it's good to understand and, you know, do a little bit of of research on your own if you know we're not this isn't a thorough understanding of the of the chakra systems and how you should manifest through them um, this is a little bit off the cuff I don't think we're well there's you could you can take that all into a meditation through your chakras you know you can start at the root and go up and and feel each one as those things and do it as a meditation and on the same note when you were talking about theta state if you look up like Hemisync, H-E-M-I-S-Y-N-C. Mm -hmm. um, there's many like playlists on that and everything, and that is um, sound healing, in, and that's the theta state, getting you into theta state. So if you play that while you're doing your meditations, it's um, a good um, frequency to manifest with. So Hemi Hemisync would be similar to binary beats? Where you have you have a slightly different frequency in one ear than you do in the other, and you use headphones, or is, is Hemi Sync something different? Um, it's it's like the it's it is it's music in theta state. It's the four. I don't I don't oh, know how many hertz it is. is four it? to seven. Four, four to, seven. to seven. Yeah. So there's another one that actually mixes the two things. So if you do the the binary beats and you do them with headphones on, it's important to do headphones. You know, because you're what happens is. The, there's a slightly different frequency going into the right ear, or different hertz going mm -hmm. to the right ear than the left ear. And the two different sides of the brain try to sync with each other. They're mm -hmm. trying to get the, and they're like, are you hearing what I'm hearing? And the, the ears are actually more sensitive than the eyes, you know, on the, on the color scale, if you were to take, to move on the color scale. That's one, fantastic, one I need number. to do that. But if you do it on, if you do it on the same scale on hearing, your, uh, your ears can pick up that one that one spot over. Where mm -hmm. if on a color color wheel or a color scale, yeah. if you move over one spot, you can't tell the difference in the shades of right. like pink. But your ears can tell. So if you're just off by like they, they just move the frequency by like ones of like maybe 105 hertz and ones 100 hertz, and your the ears uh -huh. they the two different sides of the brain go hey I'm not hearing this right, and they actually end up syncing and they they. It makes them operate. Like That's it. The frequency operates yeah. better. So you can do binary beats with theta. Yeah. You can look at that four to seven, and I've I've done that quite a bit, and I'll go into like you know forty five minute to an hour and twenty minute meditations, and I've gone probably some of the deepest that I've gone with the binary beats. Um, yeah. But I've also I did a didgeridoo with uh, and a gong mm -hmm. recently. I did didgeridoo with gong. I did just gongs recently. Um, I've been in the singing bowls. The meditations are so deep with the sounds because I just when I put the headphones on I can I feel the vibration in my brain. You know just, what would be cool yeah. is if you started putting your favorite ones together and like shared them with people because yeah, I can make a list. Yeah, of it would be cool to share that so people had like oh this is really good or I found this because you know not everybody knows and even when I'm looking for stuff to look up so I'll go through it like a lot before I'm you know. Yeah, okay. Satisfied. Yeah, that's a good idea actually. Uh, we have a website observingconsciousness.com. 
Um, so if you guys are interested in any of that stuff, I will, I'll, I'll link all my, all the videos and uh, the different places that I get my stuff if, if anybody's interested. Do you have any um, meditations you've done where there's something notable that came out for you as a message on manifesting? Well, I, I talked about this a little bit before when Dana did a massage on me and she's, she's a very talented energy worker. Mm -hmm. um, I, I got very deep. I actually had a, I had a conversation with, with my guide and I, you know, talking to my guides isn't, that's not unusual, but the channel was so open and she, and rather than me asking questions, she was coming to me with like, and, and the first thing that came into my head was all the thoughts matter. And I'm like, all the thoughts. And that was, that's all there. I mean, that's, that's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. That's that. Yeah. Everything matters to me. And it was because she said that every, every pathway for every thought had been had been planned for mm -hmm. and that's why they all matter you can't you have the ability to take anything if you think of it and the only you know physics is the only thing that stops you you can't fly so i'm not just gonna i can't run faster than i can run but i can go to wherever i want to go and i can do whatever i want to do as long as i'm you know i'm not breaking the laws mm -hmm. of physics um so you have the ability if you think of it, something that's literally possible to do in this in this 3d dimension you can go do it so it's not, nothing it was you. said that all the all the pathways are already what did you say every every thought has to be planned has to every thought you have to you have to recognize every thought matters like what my thoughts mm -hmm. to control the thoughts right but because every every one of those thoughts have been planned as a pathway so if you were to just so like a choose your own adventure you yeah, get to decide that's what what's yeah, and, but, and but the interesting part of that, and, and part of why my understanding of why it takes so long to plan a life, is because you have to think of, you have to understand what every thought you might be thinking. And mm -hmm. I don't know how that works. I don't know how you could possibly understand the intricacies what just, of the universe. Are, they don't make sense. We, it's a lot. <laughs> but yeah, it's a lot. But that is that's what we that's what I got out of it was, and that was when I was you know so Dana was two two and a half months now. I don't I don't remember exactly when it was. Mm -hmm. That's when I got that, and that's when I really went off the deep end manifesting. I'd been dabbling with it, dabbling with it. I knew about it, knew about mm -hmm. it, and I could talk about the old stories from when, you know, when I was in my early 20s, but just recognizes, but I knew my thoughts had something to do with it, and I just kind of knew something about mm -hmm. manifesting, but when I got these messages, it was like manifesting really got slapped me right in the face, and it was, and that was, yeah, that was the message, was all the thoughts matter. You can do anything you mm -hmm. want, but every one of those Every one of those thoughts still leads you to your lessons that yeah. you're going to learn in life. So you don't you don't get to avoid lessons by going, oh, look, the map is this way, and I'm just going to run over right. here. It doesn't take you away from the lessons. That's why every thought matters because it's been planned for to still get you through life's lessons that you're supposed to learn no matter what you do. Right. That we sound like right. crazy people. <laughs> that, honestly, I mean, I get goosebumps thinking about it, but that, mess, that really messed me up. Not messed me up, but it really was so eye opening. It was, it like, was, it was like, like a slap like, in the face, like, hey. This, yeah. Well, it also made me realize that free will is kind of bullshit. That, that I am in a very ish. interesting, yeah, ish. Well, I, <laughs> it still feels like free will to me. Yeah. But if every one of those thoughts has been planned for in advance, and no matter what I do, I'm still going to go through my life's lessons, that's the understanding. Then well, how would they, how would it be planned that all of our pathways are planned and all of somebody else's, and how do those match up when there's different routes chosen? <laughs> I don't know. I'm the messenger. Free will has to matter. <laughs> it ha I, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm. I. 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 It feels like it absolutely feels like free will to me. Yeah. <laughs> but when I get when when I hear this message, it doesn't feel like it yeah. can be real either. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what? Where are we at? It, everything's still a surprise to me. Every time, every day I wake up, I don't know what the thing is coming at me. It's yeah. You know, it, it's still amazing. And this, that's the other part of this is the three dimensional space that we're in. Objectively, it can be. It, it is what it is. Yeah. Whether no matter where you, it just is what it is. But what's happening within it? This can be a prison, or this can be absolute heaven, mm -hmm. or anything in between. And it's like, man, I look around and I, I'm fascinated by this place. I'm fascinated too. If we're man, if we literally are somehow, our consciousness brings this thing to life. It's magic. It's magic. It's fuck. It's magic. Like I, it's I, don't magic. Have, I don't have any better word for it. I had a meditation. I was in a on a spiritual retreat at Mount Shasta with a teacher of mine, and my family was there. My mom and one of my brothers. And um, we were doing all sorts of different exercises, but in this one, we were doing a meditation and I was deep in it. And um, I just had a vision of the earth. And so I was seeing the earth from the outside and I was all the way out of it. And I saw all different colors of light on the earth. And I felt what I was feeling and the colors coming to me of what I was feeling and everybody else's colors going to them. Like the colors on the earth were moving to match frequencies. Vibrate, yeah. And the message was, there's enough of everything. 
it's all what you are bringing in like everything there's enough of everything on this earth for all of us and um it just stuck with me really hard and it was one of the biggest um things i've seen in a meditation that really hit home and made me realize that in a deep knowing that i can absolutely have whatever i want yeah you have to and that's mm -hmm. the other thing is like limiting beliefs in your manifestations if you're manifesting something that inside you're saying it and i'm trying to feel it but in your heart of hearts you know what your internal dialogue is if you don't really believe it it's not happening mm -hmm. it's not you have to believe in yourself and you're like you know i got into the i talked a little bit before about like the gut you're governed by the physics of this reality mm -hmm. that's you are your physical body is governed by the by the physics of the reality but when you meditate you can come out of your body mm -hmm. you can go, and when you meditate you can you know, astral travel i believe is a real thing Absolutely. And, and you can go anywhere like you're not even confined to this space if your consciousness your 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 Awareness. Or dimension. Yeah, or this dimension. Yeah, your, yeah. your awareness can go to other places yeah. through meditation. You can, I can, you know, disconnect from my mm -hmm. body altogether where I vibrate so much I can't feel it, I can't feel my body. But I'm still very aware. I'm still mm -hmm. somewhere. I'm just am not very connected to this right now. So you can even disconnect from this and have whatever you want. To say limiting beliefs. It's like I say you can't do anything more than the physics of this reality say you can. Well, it's kind of not true either. It's like no. I can meditate and get out of this, the physics of this reality. So you have to, your own limiting beliefs and your manifestations, mm -hmm. you have to believe you can do it. But just like Lethia said, the colors are coming together, the vibrations come together. Anything, you can have anything you want, I believe. You just have to believe that you can have it. And yeah. You and really believe it. it can be, you know, it, it can be a process to get there. Like all of us, you know, I'm, oh. I'm still on my journey with that and everybody is, we're still alive. But, um, <clears throat> it's, it's just, uh, it's just dropping like the feeling of like needing it, right? Like if you don't see it quick enough, like if I got this, I understand it now, like I feel it. Why am I not there now? Why don't I, why don't I have this? And I believe that and uh, there's been energetically things that have also been set into a queue, which haven't manifested yet. I believe that we're still like, as we're working through things, things are coming up for what we've put out a little while back, you know? So it's like, we're still getting through this queue of getting there. I gotta, so you, just, you brought that up and I just, I just thought of something that, so when I moved, when I moved here about, I was, I've been here for three years now, it was about two and a half years ago, I was driving down the road uh, by, by my house and I saw a Mercedes SUV and I was like, oh, that's, that looks like a pretty nice car and I kind of grew up next to it. Windows were a little tinted, so I kind of looked over and I see this dude with, red frizzy hair uh -huh. and I'm like instantly I was like this is that carrot top, carrot top. <laughs> and I was like, that carrot top? And so uh I was I, I looked over and I couldn't I didn't I didn't know where he lived I didn't really know anything about him at that point I just say I knew who he was um but I, when I saw him I was like that's who that looked like so I got home and googled and sure enough he lives in the same area and it's like that's oh so that's Vegas. wild <laughs> so now this is the it's now is this manifesting I don't know but I saw him and I haven't, I don't know why I saw him. And then, and like I said before, I've said many times, I think everything's got purpose. I don't know what it is, but I saw this guy two years ago. Didn't say anything, didn't, didn't like try to follow him anywhere, just whatever. So yesterday I'm, uh, I'm at one of the local casinos and I'm walking by and dude, I see this frizzy red hair over like a couple of, of uh, the slot machines. Uh -huh. And I instantly, when I do that, that red hair looks like Carrot Top's red hair. And I'm like, I go, I'm gonna go over and see what's <laughs> So I, I walked around the, the, the thing I, and I walked over there and I got up, got up on it and I looked over and I was like, holy shit, that is it. I just went, I say, hey, man, I'm a big fan, shook his hand and went on my way. Didn't, the, the interaction meant absolutely nothing. <laughs> nothing came of it, didn't have a conversation, but why? Why, why carrot, did I see him two years ago? Your and then, guide. Yeah, then I, like, <laughs> then I see that like, did I manifest that? Like you talk about like yeah. planting a seed. I don't. Mm -hmm. I have. I've never had like this internal thing that I want to hang out with the guy. I've never wanted to meet him personally. I've like I, I enjoy his comedy and whatnot. But maybe your guides come to you in human form through Carrot Top. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's uh, you know, Polly Shore is another interesting one. Yeah. Somehow I've like I've crossed paths with him a, a bunch of times, and he's like he was one of those ones that. I never had a draw to necessarily, but here he is in my reality for some well, reason. Well, vibrationally, there must be something that something is I, connecting you guys. You I don't know? And I've never talked to the guy. Like, he doesn't know who I am. Yeah. But, but it's interesting that he keeps showing up in my reality. It is and it's funny. Like, why, why is that? I've, yeah, there's, a, there's a few other ones that I've, that I've had show up that uh, I haven't had, that I've had them be very close for different reasons. Like, uh -huh. they haven't actually, I like, oh, I was here and so and so was just here. And I'm like, well, I mean, I'm not think say of that just outside show, but... the celebrity realm, too. It's like normal people are like that. I have people on my periphery of life that I don't always hang out with that are always kind of like 
showing up or there or around and I'm like, I see you, you know, but. The vibration, so the energetic vibration, you can like through that alone, like just, just in the different interactions that we mm -hmm. have that we don't necessarily understand. That's, there's something in that, I believe. There's something in that, vi that vibration, that, that energetic vibration mm -hmm. that's, that pulls people in and out. It's like the internet is a very interesting thing because we think the internet connects us. I think the energetic energy that that flows between us that's the real internet that's right. what really connects us and I think that's I think that's a technology mm -hmm. just like a, just like I think there's a pretty fucking good chance that we're probably in a simulation yeah um, does it change anything no it doesn't like we still live in life and this is it is what it is but yeah. it, but if if we are in a simulation and this is some kind of a very complex computer program of some sort then it would make sense that energy is a technology that we just don't totally understand but definitely it works and it's real and it's, it's like, the real technology it really is it's, like it's that's and that's the limiting belief is just how much that that energy you know how much you can actually pick up and 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 interpret for yourself i mean it happens sometimes like my my dad used to be one of those intuitives that you know, he didn't even understand what he was doing but you'd like play trivial pursuit with the guy and people like at our family you don't read the back of the you don't read the answer because he'd pick stuff off he just mm -hmm. like, i mean he was an in incredibly intelligent person mm -hmm. so there's information but there was stuff that he just would not know and he'd say pick a name and there it was it was like we he would just say it was like he could pick up the energy somehow he didn't know what he was doing but he did it I, well that's it's fun to read energy i mean i'm sure that i don't even have to ask you this but have you ever gone into a room or been in a situation where you just react or you just studied the energy and you didn't really study what people were saying you know like that's that's how i look at every situation hanging out with people and it's fascinating like yeah. to see who's talking to who or what's who's gravitating to what and like or the room change when somebody walks in, or the you know it's or, it's or the room change when you walk in, <clears throat> yeah. And watch, oh, yeah. Or just or just walk into the room quietly and, mm -hmm. and just just to re, just to feel like a, is this a good energy room, a bad energy room? And sometimes you walk into a place, and you're just like, oh man, that this I got a bad feeling, and that's like that's energy. Like, and and practice walking in with an intention of energy, walking in like pouring love out of you, and watch the room change, and you know being around people with with that like emoting love and and watching people soften or shift or change it's you can it's amazing you know if you're if this is one that i did so i did uh i did mdma and at the end of is like a therapy and at the end of the the session um i just decided to go out for a walk and i was mm -hmm. still feeling amazing like you just uh, that's that's a fantastic drug mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean it just it's like heart opening and so I was I was walking through an area and I mean I was just like my whole intention was just to give good energy mm -hmm. somebody looked at me I was smiling at them well I've done the just smile at people and mm -hmm. you don't always get smiles back but on that day I I don't know how many different people were just like I've had people just look it over and I was smiling and it was but it was because you were really was feeling from it here, yeah and I wasn't just a smile on my face yeah. I wasn't you know I didn't have other stuff on my mind and I was you know really internally I was I was you know struggling with something and I was just giving somebody a smile like something about that energy like it was they, genuine other people can feel it they don't even know they feel it I think we all work on such an autopilot and our egos and our, our minds our, our mm -hmm. conscious minds are so strong that we don't we just think there are our own mm -hmm. thoughts coming in and mm -hmm. you know we don't recognize that that's real energy that you can have a real effect on people with you know your real love if and you're pure love and on that note you can have an effect on money you can have an effect on your job, your situation, you can have an effect on anything. And it comes from the place of really feeling it like you felt projecting that to people. And uh, <clears throat> everything is just energy. It's yeah, frequency, it's all, it's you know, energy. it gravitates to likeness, you know, so we might as well just be fucking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, live, in, live your best self. Like say, you know, I think a lot of, I think a lot of ourselves hold ourselves down and it's, uh, yeah. I know for myself, I held myself in, in one spot for a very long time and to get out of it and to break free of it was, it's so liberating. I'm, I, you know, I've, I've manifested the place that I'm at now. It's a snowball. It's, it is. It's Cause a, it's like more now, now you're getting into like the good stuff. Yeah, exactly. I, I realized that what I manifested now was very much what I wanted, but not every, not exactly yeah. how I wanted it. Right. I have, but I have, I have the bigger picture that I want, mm -hmm. but not exactly how it's like, so there's some more details. So it's, now that I realize like my power in that and it empowers the shit out of me. Mm -hmm. Like I feel, I feel very empowered to, to, until I find differently. I was like, I feel very empowered. So it's yeah. like, then just like you said, it's like, it's getting exciting. Like this is, this is a really exciting time getting into this stuff, like getting to have these conversations finally that we yeah. are, we've already been having, but it's like, yeah. it's, it, this is a manifestation of just trying to let other people do it too, because right. we, like we want to, we want to engage other people. And I think it's like, 
it's it was important for me to learn to not, not set minimums like oh if i just had enough to like cover this and like as long as my horses are fed everything's cool like i'll be fine Guess but what? We, we got a man of you know the horses only got fed <laughs> yeah of course and so it's like we don't need to set these maximums with ourselves for what we need to manifest it's more about like setting a minimum and you know you look at people that um are worried to spend money and in fear of like not having it or you know always worried about savings and it's like you know something happens and they're like well thank god i had the savings you know because they're just setting them just like you did with your truck just setting themselves up to need the savings yep, so they yep. can take it out yep. and just have enough to do that and it's like no you know when we spend money we need to do that with joy and like and happiness and knowing that everything that i put out is going to come back to yeah, me tenfold. yeah you can you can spend this money freely mm -hmm. and, and more is coming like, yeah it's not you don't have to oh if i spend this i won't have no you, you yeah. do this and you also have yeah. because that's what you're putting out there is I'm, i have a button i have all that i need I and all. i have like i got married last year and we're doing grown-up things and like filing our taxes together and shit Ooh. and uh you know we are both self-employed and um we have like self-employment tax and this and that and had to spend this amount on taxes this year and it was so great because i had the conversation with him and i was like oh this is gonna cost us like this much this year and he was like great okay cool fine and i'm like i love that you had that attitude because i'm like so thankful to pay this because we both have our own businesses and like this is setting us up to bring in all the money that's about to come to us and i'm like fucking jazzed about it and i and we were like dancing and giddy about like paying our taxes together which is like crazy so but i'm like it's fucking awesome and that's that's like how i want things to be i don't want to be like worried about you know i don't have enough for taxes yeah. now there's it's, the, like, it's, all, it's, it's all taken care of and i always said before wow, the universe is magic. Like somehow I'm always covered, even though I was getting by on the skin of my teeth. And I was always like just covered. But now it's like, no, like there is enough to be like amazingly abundant and helpful to other people in that too. Like we can have it all. Yeah, we're gonna have, we're gonna have a big ass yeah. property with a cult on it soon. Yeah. It's just, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's on its way. We're manifesting that you guys are- There will be a mud wrestling contest to determine the cult leader. <laughs> This is not like something the DJ just skips. I to can't get just be the because leader. it's like the second time around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I succumb to the bad ten mud wrestling. I will, I will fight. I will fight for my position as love leader. <laughs> We're training. We have a few people training training at the ranch for that. Maybe we'll just uh, we'll just every couple months we'll just train spots. Yeah. I don't I don't even know if I want to be the leader. I just want to be in the cult. I don't. Rotational I don't need, cult I don't need to leader. Be yeah. We just take turns coming up with ideas. All right. Um, <laughs> I think that kind of wraps things up on the manifesting side. I do like to, uh, at the end of the, the pod, I like to, to do the rabbit holes thing. Different, just different things that interest us that are, uh, that, that we're kicking around or mm -hmm. we're interested in. You know, it doesn't even, you don't have to have tons and tons of information. Is there any, yeah. any different rabbit holes that you're kicking around right now? You know, I wasn't, but I always believed in fairies. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. <laughs> and I went camping, um, like a couple days ago with my best friend and some other friends and we were celebrating her birthday and they like a large portion of the group maybe three or four of them were telling me that um they have seen and they saw like in the middle of the night and they have seen before little people like i'm talking like little people like run around like like fairies but they're people and i was like is this in the fairy realm is this in the troll realm like and they're like no they're people but they're little people so i had never seen one and i thought that was fascinating. did you see one no, <laughs> but they did. <laughs> they did. Um, so I want to go down that rabbit hole. I need to do a little studying. I have. If anybody have... knows anything about this, I would love to be. So explained. before I got, before I did this, did psychedelics, I was very rooted in science. Like I didn't, if, if I couldn't put science around it, I kind of just threw out the window. Yeah. And one Nerd. of <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> yes. I was uh, very uninvolved at that point. So one of my mom's friends though, she's, she's now, and I say that if I can't put science around it, well, my, my houses were haunted like my whole childhood. Mm -hmm. It's not like I didn't have this stuff. I just didn't have, I didn't understand right. it and I didn't 
didn't know how to interact with it, but it was there for me. And I definitely knew, so I definitely believed in these things. So my mom had, a, had one of her friends that was telling me about like, some of her haunted house stories were horrific. Like mm -hmm. her bed spinning around, like I never had anything. Demonic. Really yeah, yeah, it was like really evil stuff. Yeah. I just had like footsteps and you know, we, we like smells and stuff and, and things like that would pop up. This lady had some really interesting stuff and she talked about fairies. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, <laughs> she's full of shit. Mm -hmm. I've seen fairies. But, but here, here's the, the, this is the thing. So when I was thinking to myself, she's full of shit. This is probably, you know, this is like eight, nine, ten, nine years ago. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was quite a while back. Since then, I've thought about that very thing. And I'm like, dude, are those, like, there are so many different, different spiritual beliefs and different possibilities. Mm -hmm. And for me to be narrow-minded enough to say something doesn't exist when I have all the stories that I have, I couldn't be, I couldn't possibly. So I'm, I'm interested and in I want to know what they're up to. Yeah. I want to know what they're, what is the, you know, if they're running around at night, like what are they doing during the day? Are they, you know, what's their job? What, yeah. are, they, what are they trying to accomplish? And what do you think's going on? I, well, I actually had a side thought, a different rabbit hole. <laughs> Change it up, let's go. That's, just because you talked about haunted things. So I have been hearing um, of, of people that are dealing with mirrors and they are, um, it's like a haunted spirit around you that mirrors somebody in your life. So like this one woman's getting followed around by somebody that mirrors her husband. So she'll hear his voice. She heard him come home like when he wasn't home. Like, and she's gotten photos of the back of the guy. I'm getting goosebumps on that look and it looks exactly like her husband. So it's spirits like embodying a person being like a mirror to them to I think for basically lessons? fuck with you, possibly for lessons. I'm not sure. I would like to know more about that. That's fascinating. Yeah, I would like to know more about mirrors. So, what, so let's just go down the haunted house. <laughs> <laughs> let's go down that rabbit hole some more. So you said you said uh, mirrors where they will hear a voice. Well, so when I was a kid, I was like seven. This went on from the time I was probably until I was six years old until I was like almost eleven. We had, when my dad drove this uh, 1978 Ford pickup that had the big motor in it, and we, like, and we lived in a trailer with very thin walls. Like it was, it's mm -hmm. not like you, you can, you, any, any car pulled up, you know, a Honda pulled up, you mm -hmm. heard it. Well, this truck pulled up and it like vibrated the walls. We would hear that truck pull up, vibrating the walls, like you could hear it through the window. You'd hear the truck door slam, like you got out of it, and then nobody would come inside. Nobody. And you'd go walk over to the window, and my dad's not there, the truck's not there, and you're like, no. And then I shit you not, 10 minutes later, he would pull up. And we would get, that that truck would act as an early alarm system for us, even when other cars were coming. Like, mm -hmm. it didn't happen every, every time, but mm -hmm. it was it was probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, like, 60 70% of the time. Almost all the time before my dad got home, but 60 70% of the time, if somebody else was coming over, we'd hear that noise. It was like a 10-minute early alarm, alarm that's system. That's interesting. So, so weird. It was like, that, a, that's crazy. 6 to 7 years old, 8 yeah. years old. I have no answer for why this stuff happens, but I yeah. shit you not. It, was, it happens. It happens. So what's your rabbit hole? <laughs> I think we just did my rabbit hole. Okay. <laughs> I think that's enough for the people's for today. Yeah, it's a lot, a lot for the brain. That's a brain food. All right. Uh, peace and love, everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll check you out next time.